investors behave in very human ways, which is they get very excited during bull markets and they look in the rearview mirror and they say, I made money last year, I'm going to make more money this year, so this time I'll borrow, you know, or, or the neighbor says, you know, I wasn't in last year when that neighbor was dumber than I, I made a lot of money, so I'm going to go in this year. So they're always looking in the rearview mirror. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see a lot of money having been made in the last few years, they plow in and they just push and push and push on prices. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see no money having been made, they just say, this is a lousy place to be. So they don't care what's going on in the underlying business. And it's, it's astounding, but that's, that makes for huge opportunity. Just huge opportunity. Hey guys, welcome back. Neil here, slightly different video today. We're looking over some old Warren Buffett clips to get us ready for the upcoming Berkshire Hathaway meeting that's happening this weekend, uh, May 1st at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yahoo will be streaming it live if you want to check it out, so make sure you check that out if you're interested. If not, you'll probably be a few different um, videos coming up with a bit of a highlight reel, I imagine, in the following days after the actual event. I watched this last year, and it was super interesting. It's actually the first one I've actually watched live, but it was pretty cool, and I highly recommend you check it out if you're interested in the space. Um, it's quite interesting to hear what he has to say. Um, and that's why I've been watching some of these old Buffett clips to try and get my head back in the old Warren Buffett game. Um, and even though this clip is quite old, I think there's some very key things that we can sort of relate to today's market as well. So these are just a couple of key things that I've been pulling from this video. And if we look over the Buffett indicator, this is a key indicator um, that Buffett actually was quoted saying once, but then he sort of retracted his um, statements about this Buffett indicator, but the name stuck. So that's what we're looking at here as well, which is just a good indication of how the whole entire market as a whole is stacking up to GDP. That's the entire GDP of the US. So if we look at today, I'm over at current market valuation.com they're saying that the Buffett indicator is strongly overvalued so we'll just scroll down here and have a quick look um, what the uh, charts are telling us here so the aggregate US market value so this is the entire US market is coming in at 51.3 trillion um, whereas the current quarter annualized GDP estimate coming in at 21.9 trillion um, so you divide the two and that's giving you 234 percent so let's just scroll down and see how this stacks up over the last sort of um, 30 odd years here. Um, so here we can have the fairly valued line, so everything should be about right through there. Um, and this is where we are over on the far right here. So this is as of April 22nd, 2021, 234% ratio of market value to GDP, 88% higher than the long term trend line. Um, so look, I'm not trying to predict any stock or market crash. I can't do that. No one can. So if anyone's out there watching any other video and they're trying to say that they, you know, the stock market's tanking next week, bloody sell everything, don't listen to them. We're just having a look at some of the key things here, um, and this is one of the things we're looking at here. So pretty interesting times in the market. Anyway, let's sneak back over to see what Buffett has to say in the next clip. I mean, I lived through roughly half, in an investing sense, about half that period. And I've had that long period of stagnation from 48, uh, I mean, from 65 uh, to 82, 17 years. I wrote an article for Forbes in 1979. I just said, how can this be? Pension funds in the in 1970 put a hundred and some percent of their new money in stock because they were wild about stocks. Then they got a lot cheaper, and they put a record low in nine percent of their net new money in in 1978 when stocks were way cheaper. People behave very peculiarly in in, in terms of their reactions because they they're human beings and they they get excited when others get excited, they get greedy when others get greedy, they get fearful when others get fearful, and they'll continue to do so. And you will. You know, you will see things you won't believe in your lifetime and securities markets. And the country will do very well over time, but you will see these huge waves. And, and, and uh, if you can stay objective throughout that, if you can detach yourself temperamentally from the crowd, you get very rich. And you won't have to be be very bright. I mean, it, uh, I'm sure you are, but but uh, <laughs> you want you know it just it doesn't take brains. It takes temperament. It takes the ability to sit there and look at something. When I started out in 1950, I would go through and find things at two times earnings, and they were perfectly decent businesses, and people wanted jobs at those companies, and everybody knew they were going to be around, and they wouldn't buy them at two times earnings, and that's when interest rates were two and a half percent. You know, I went to the I started selling securities when I was 21. And a Kansas City Life Insurance Company happened to be a fairly prominent company in Omaha. And the policies they sold you, if you were buying life insurance from them, had a built-in assumption of 2% interest. The stock of Kansas City Life was selling at less than three times 
earnings. You were getting 35% if you bought the stock. No question about the soundness of the company. I went to the local agent. I, I figured, hell, I ought to be able to sell him a few shares of stock. I mean, the guy ought to understand it. He's got his whole life invested in this company. I went to the local agent who had been with him for 20 years. And his, his name was Moose. I said, Mr. Moose, I said, you know, you're selling these policies with 2%. You may even have a few on members of your own family, and you can buy into this company whose paycheck you depend on every month and, you, and whose future you, your, your beneficiaries of these life policies depend on and who you're selling them, you know, a 2% investment on, and you can get 35% on your money. And he said, you know, stocks aren't any good. And, and I, couldn't, I couldn't sell you, you know, I was a lousy salesman. I mean, well, you have to start with that. But, but uh, it, it just blew me away. It blew me away. I thought, sometimes I used to wonder if I was nuts, you know. And, uh, but those things, the same thing happened. I mean, in 1964, the Dow closed at 864. At the end of 1981, 17 years later, it closed at 865. It moved one point in 17 years. Now, that's not a big move. And that, you, you can't believe the, how, how discouraged people were by that, by, during that period. But, All right, guys, it's pretty crazy there where he's referring to the 17 years where the market only moved up one point. So heavily bear market over that space of time. Everyone was off the market. And if we compare that to today, let's have a quick look how far the market has recovered and is punching through to all-time highs um, over this last year that we've all sort of experienced from those March lows last year. So if we look back to the 20th of March, 2020, we can see the Dow closed at around 19,173. And then if we look fast forward, you know, just over a year from there, um, we, the, mark, the Dow is closing at 33,981. So that's a huge increase. That's a total of 77.23%. Um, increase over that space of time. And then we're talking just over a year. So pretty crazy times if you're comparing them to, um, you know, what Buffett was experiencing there for those 17 years. Um, and we'll just have a quick sort of comparison to the P ratios that he was referring to in the video with that particular company where he was picking up, you know, with a P ratio of around two. Um, let's just have a quick look over Tesla. I know it's a pretty unfair um, comparison of these two where they're totally different companies and everything like that. And I understand that. And I truly admire and respect what um, Elon's done for Tesla. I think it's, he's an incredible man, and I really do admire what he's doing. But it, I just can't be part of the action for the current price, um, which a lot of people are prepared, they're happy to be paying these outrageous overvaluations um, for Tesla. Um, so let's just have a quick look at the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio of Tesla today. Um, so this is of 27th of April, 2021. The current PE ratio is 1,158. So pretty crazy differences there from those two sort of, um, I know it's totally different sort of businesses and sectors and everything like that, and it's total different times, and interest rates are at historic lows, and um, the future outlook for Tesla is super optimistic, and everyone's super, obviously super optimistic of the future of Tesla, um, which is reflected in the PE ratio, but it's still pretty crazy to see the difference there in price and what people are happy to pay um, for a slice of it at the moment. So pretty crazy times we're all experiencing. Bit of a different video today, guys. Um, drop in the comments if you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed um, watching a lot of old sort of Buffett clips recently because um, I think they're just some very good timeless advice that we can sort of take from Buffett and not just Buffett, Monash Parai, Guy Spear and these other sort of value investors as well. Um, but it's just anything that we can sort of relate to today's sort of market that we're all living through just to really sort of cut through some of that noise and frothiness that we're all sort of experiencing. So make sure you drop in the comments if you did enjoy this video and I'll make future videos like this as well. Um, and remember, if you did get some value from today's video, it'd be much appreciated if you hit that like button. Helps me out a ton, helps push these videos out a bit further. And if you want to see future videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you can stay up to date with the latest videos. Um, with that said, I'm going to let Buffett close this one out. Um, so we'll catch you guys in the next video. So things can go on a long time that don't make sense. And... But they do come to an end. I mean, the internet thing. I mean, you had these companies selling for many billions of dollars that had no, really practically no prospects of making any money. That, that's, a, that's a bubble. But Herb Stein one time said, anything that can't go on forever will end. <laughs> now, that seems pretty, uh, but think about that. And uh, particularly think about it next time you're trying to do something just because the stock's gone up a whole lot, you know, and your neighbors made money or something. It, uh, you've got to be, you just have to sit and think objectively and think about, would I buy this whole business? If it's an internet company, it's got 100 million shares out and selling at 100, that's $10 billion. Is it worth $10 billion? If it's worth $10 billion, it's got to be able to give you, you know, seven or 800 million next year. And if it doesn't give you seven or 800 million next year, <clears throat> it has to give you maybe 10% more than that the year after and continue to be. There aren't a lot of businesses that can do that. And people just go crazy.